The price of petroleum products in Nigeria has again increased. A visit to an NMPC filling station in Lagos on Tuesday confirmed that the fuel price has now been adjusted from 449 naira per litre to 568 naira. In the federal capital territory Abuja, sources confirmed that prices have gone up from 537 naira per litre to 617 naira. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority is yet to comment on the development. President of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Chinedu Okorunkwo, joins us now to discuss the new petrol price regime and what it means for the teeming uh, Nigerians. It's good to have you on Arise News. Having me. Okay, so let's let's go straight into it. We saw the jump of uh, the price of uh, petrol go from one ninety eight to over five hundred per liter. Back was that was back in May thirtieth after uh, the president's inaugural speech uh, and him, of course, declaring the end of uh, fuel subsidy. And now today. Uh, motorists are raising the alarm that stations have increased their price to an average of between 568 uh, here in Lagos and over 600 naira even in, in the FCT. Can we talk about the reason behind this? What has led to this increase? Break it down for uh, Nigerians watching this, trying to understand this jump that happened supposedly overnight. Um, well, um you know that uh, this business is done with dollar. Remember, the rate of dollar now is in one window. It's not when you have uh, maybe CBA will be giving official rate of uh, 400 or something, and uh, the black market will be something in the region of 700. But today, as I speak, it's over 800 and something. And there is no more second window. And in a due regulated regime, what determines the price of anything is uh, the cost. This product is not refined here. Everything is imported. And you see the volatility is there. But if moving forward, we want to achieve something, there are other alternatives which we have preferred the CNG. I think that is the only breather that this nation needs to vigorously look into. By the time we pursue that aspect of uh, energy mix, it will be a matter of choice if you want to use petrol, if you want to use uh, gas, but that area has to be developed. Yes, the price has really gone up because of uh, the fundamentals in the market. The whole thing is under dollar. It's under dollar parity, anyway. Um, duly noted about the need for the CNG area to be developed, but when it comes to other reasons that were suggested for this increase, apart from what you mentioned about the dollar, the other factors is that um, the international, it's basically um, the increase on crude oil prices in the international market, and the third applying to some states in Nigeria, specifically in the north, where the transportation costs, um, when it comes to transport, um, transportation of fuel would also cause an increase. So do you see these as also cogent or tangible reasons for this hike in price? I think uh, transport might not be the issue, basically because you must get the price at the time at the depot. What is the depot going for? Then you begin to add up, you know, all that variables that will bring uh, the escalation of the price. Uh, putting the northern market, yes, because of the transport, it will go up. Even in the southern market, it, it's not there, it's not fixated, it's also up. So those factors, must also come into reckoning. And I believe this is why every effort must be geared towards bringing alternative. That alternative is key. By the time we transit 
into that CNG. You, I mean, a lot of people using CNG now, like in Benin, they are not complaining. Uh, they are having their gas, they are having their product. So uh, it's expected that in a market that is not regulated, you see this volatility anyway. It might go up, it might go down, like any other commodity. Thank you. Okay, so talking about, you know, the, 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 the chances that the new default pump prices are likely to, you know, come down as well. I mean, looking at the pump prices depending on the market forces. I remember uh, the group chief executive officer, uh, Mr. Mele Kiari, or that's of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, had said, of course, even here on, on his interview here on Arise News, that the fuel uh, pump prices in the country are, of course, reflective of the current market price of the commodity. As of this morning, we're seeing a Brent crude at about $78.86 uh, per barrel. So looking forward to the future, uh, looking at the market pricing, you know, and the body language, are we looking at any chances that this uh, fuel uh, pricing could go down? Uh, remember that this in itself is, is going to take uh, a toll on Nigeria. Nigerians and an immediate uh, a toll uh, or an immediate effect on how Nigerians are going to plan transportation and moving around. So uh, just looking at the market, is there any uh, indication at all that this might come down soon? Mm, it all depends on um, if the OPEC will increase their pump out to the market. You know, Saudi Arabia removed about a million barrels. This is also one of those factors that we think have uh, really contributed to this price hiking. And uh, like you said, what the crude, the Brent is going for today. But in any commodity, the chances are that it might go up or it will go down. But what is needed here now for us is for us to have an alternative. And that alternative it's in CNG for now. There could be other energy mix that will help this country, basically. Now, um, I'd like to take, you know, to take this further regarding the, the CNG aspect. As at about a month ago, roughly, we know that the president, we heard, you know, news about the president, you know, putting in place a structural approach to make available cheap fuel through CNG and also LNG to mitigate the effects of the subsidy um, removal on Nigerians. Are you content with the pace at which you, this administration is going in terms of providing alternatives? I think uh, we were given eight weeks when they met with the labor. That eight, eight week is still on and they are meeting. Maybe at the end of the eight weeks, they will come out with a plan but I think that plan should be robust in a way that uh, workers and uh, commuters will begin to have this thing. We have a lot of plans in our own end, especially the independent marketers, on how to deploy, co-locate this uh, CNG with our filling stations. And uh, we've started the data collection and pretty soon we'll know the number because you have to create the market that is what needed. Gas business is not like petroleum business where you just go and carry it. Your boss assured those IOCs that there is market. By the time they give you that you will come again for them to develop their infrastructure. That infrastructure is needed. And they need assurance that the market is also going towards the, you know, that direction. That is why you see a lot of areas is being flayed but there is no market. But with a country with over 200 million people, by the time that market is developed, we will also have uh, a lot of uh, breather. There will be, you know, cause for us to do business. A lot of things are really suffering now. You just wake up, you see the price have changed because we are not controlling the, this thing. And again, the refineries must also begin to work. Uh, thank God, thank God, they say he's going to run out by August. Pretty soon we'll get into August. Let's, let's hope that it will work with the CNG and all these other refineries coming up. Uh, we still have a uh, reason to say 
It's not the end of the tunnel yet. Okay, Mr. Chinedu, in light of the fluctuating uh, crude oil prices, as you've uh, alluded to, of course, in the international market and the exchange rate challenges, are there any strategies that the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria can adopt to ensure that, you know, these pump prices remain, uh, you know, affordable and reflect the current market conditions, but more importantly, collaborating with its members and petroleum marketers across the country to ensure transparency in pricing and preventing an arbitrary price increase. Because we do know that there, you know, there have been certain marketers that have taken advantage of the slight uh, increase and even selling uh, you know, fuel that they already had in stock that they bought for a cheaper amount and starting to sell it for this new uh, price increase. Is there anything that is being done to make sure that people don't take advantage of that loophole? Okay, um, nobody would like to keep his product because you borrow money from the bank, you do a lot of other exigencies. But I think the, pro the, uh, the idea we are trying to prefer is that some of these extensions in the depot must stop, especially now that the business is deregulated, a situation where the tanker drivers will tell you to pay extra money on the cost for which you are. That is, if you look at some of this from last week, we have alerted the government. The need for people to allow this business to flow without injecting additional brunt to the public. Our business is highly competitive. You can put your price maybe high and others are selling law, and you can't be in business. The only thing is for you to follow what the price is even selling. For my members, we're even ready to sell below what an NPC price is. Reason, our overhead is not like that of an NPC. We can, if they're selling maybe 511, my members, last, last regime of uh, before this increase, we're even selling below. With, knocking off two naira, three naira, so that they will go back again. I think the government has to help us check the system in the refineries, in the depots, everywhere this product is gotten. Let there be no additional extortion from both major independent and the depot owners. That way, the price will not be you know, rising like, now we have gotten this increase. And the additional cost to this will also not be, you know, uh, 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 very good for my members and the public, you know. Now, as we round up, uh, Mr. Koronkwa, you I mentioned think. that the, the government needs to do more when it comes to checking these, you know, extortion attempts. But do you think there's been so much focus yes. on the 8,000 naira going to about 12 million households that you know, all this has been relegated to the background. And there even, there's even speculation that the 8,000 naira, when it's eventually distributed, might not really go very far in actually curbing or cushioning the effects because of how things are looking right now. Uh, well, I think uh, there are levels of uh, life in this country. There are those that will work with that 8,000 Naira. But the large population, to me, that 8,000 Naira will not go anywhere. And why not we think of putting something that will help them come out of their poverty, create other values, aid. Uh, you can apply it in the area of uh, agriculture. You can also put it in, uh, you know, making buses available. That way, it will go a long way in reducing because eight naira of today is not something you can bask, hit your hand on the table and say it will do anything. Uh, government idea is how to reduce poverty, how to bring people joy and smile to their faces again. But I think, uh, this money collectively could be used in something mega and bigger that will produce wealth or you know, create wealth and make, things, make life 
much, much better mm. moving forward. Mm. I mean, in the long term, as we wrap up, what role do you see, uh, you know, Ipman itself uh, playing in promoting energy diversification and, of course, encouraging the development of sustainable and affordable energy solutions to reduce uh, Nigeria's dependency on petrol and, of course, uh, alleviate the burden of price fluctuations on the Nigerian population? Yeah, you know that um, before now, we have had people using CNG. Mm -hmm. But Ipman, in our study, we reviewed that this is the only energy that can help this country at a time like this. And that is why we have decided to co-locate it in our, in our various filling station across all the nooks and crannies of this country. By the time we deploy this energy, life will come back again because uh, people will not suffer. This gas is here. CNG, LNG is here in Nigeria. We're not going to import it. We're even flaring it. You know. So for us, we're also doing something that will bring you know, serious uh, uh, unleashing of wealth to this country and uh, bringing back life again because uh, things are beginning to get hurt. But I think by the time we we'll roll out properly, it will go a long way to addressing this issue of energy problem. We certainly hope Thank that you. will be the case. Mr. Chinedo Korunko, President of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, we'd like to say a big thank you for your time and contribution here on Newsday. Mm -hmm.